Hello, this is Jack Jackson back again, and we're going to talk today just very briefly about what are called dual geometries. So here's the definition. Two geometries are said to be dual geometries if and only if there is a bijection between the points of one geometry and the lines of the other geometry such that the incidence relations are reversed. So let's see, what does that mean? Is on in the original geometry becomes contains in the dual geometry. Intersecting in the first one becomes collinear in the second geometry. Parallel in one geometry becomes non-collinear and so forth. For example, the four-point geometry and the four-line geometry that we had in the last two videos are actually duals of each other. So note that the four points of the four-point geometry can be mapped to the four lines of the four-line geometry so that the indices are reversed. In other words, such that if a point is on a line in the four-point geometry, then the image line of the point contains the image point of the line in the four-line geometry. Notice that the postulates and propositions are simply inverted as well. So, um, so we recall our model of our four-point geometry from the last video is we have points A, B, C, and D. And we have lines of two points, A, B, A, C, A, D, B, C, B, D, M, C, D, like this. And our four line geometries, we start at four lines, P, Q, R, and S, which were sets of three points, ultimately, which we see the model here. And we ended up with six points. Notice here we have four points, six lines. Here we have six points, four lines. And so we're going to match those up uh, with a one-to-one -one correspondence and we can see that everything will kind of transfer over sort of backwards way so in postulate one over here is there exist exactly four points that translates over here to there exist exactly four lines okay that matches out each pair of distinct points is contained in exactly one line well the way that translates over here in the in the dual geometry is the points become lines and the line becomes a point. So it says each pair of distinct, well, over here on the left, it says each pair of distinct points contains one line. This says each pair of distinct lines intersects in one point. That was our postulate two over here. Postulate three in the original, let's say if we think of this original geometry as the four points, each line contains exactly two points in the dual that says each the line becomes points, the points become lines. So each point is on exactly two lines. That was postulate three. We had some propositions. Proposition one over here was given any line and a point not on the line, there exists exactly one line through X parallel to line L. So uh, for example, if we have A and B, and then a point C not on the line, there's exactly one line parallel there. Okay, how does that translate over here? It says given a line, a point X and a line not containing X, there ex exists exactly one point on L, which is not uh, collinear, which is, which is non-collinear with X. So over here, let's go back over that. So it says if we have a line, say A, B, and a point on line C, there's exactly one line that doesn't intersect A, B that contains C, and that's just the line C, D. Over here it says the dual of that is if we give a point, a point, let's say point A, and a line not containing A, that would be this one right here, there's exactly one point on um, on this line, which is non-collinear with A. Well, E's collinear with A, C's collinear with A, but F is not. Okay, given any line, there exists exactly one line parallel to it and four lines that intersect it. So given any line, so let's start with line AB. Uh, there are one, two, three, four lines intersect at one parallel. Okay, over here, given any point, 
there's exactly one point nonclinear with it and four points collinear with it. So given point A, one point nonclinear, that's F, and these points here are collinear, and these are collinear. So this is just this is what's meant by the dual there. Another proposition, any pair of distinct lines intersecting at most one point. So if you take two lines, they're either parallel or they intersect once. Well, change lines to points over here. Given any pair of points X and Y, there exists at most one line containing them. Either there's exactly one line containing them, like A and B, or none at all, like A and F. Each point is on exactly three lines. See point A, there are three lines containing it. Over here, each line contains exactly three points. Pick a line, like this one. It contains three points, A, D, and E. And the correspondence then, one way you could correspond them, there's probably more than one way here. Well, there definitely is more than one way. You could take, say, point A to point P, point B to point uh, point A to line P, point A on the left to point li to line P on the right, uh, point B on the left to, point to line Q on the right, and C, point C goes to line R, point D go goes to line S. And if you do this, then that means that uh, if you kind of go backwards, if you take the the lines uh, the lines over here and go back to the points. Line AB goes to point A, line AC goes to point B, and so forth. So lines in one go to points in the other and vice versa. So that is uh, the idea of a dual uh, geometry. We're not going to do a whole lot with this but uh, in my course, but it is kind of an interesting little idea. In fact, anytime you've got one geometry, you can sort of do something like this to get a dual geometry out of it.